Saturday night, presented by the United States Postal Service. Tonight, the Boston College Eagles take on the number one ranked Hurricanes of Miami. Kim Dorsey right in the thick of the Heisman Trophy race very early on in the season, but a very poised and good field general who understands his offense as well as anyone. Mike last year, Chestnut Hill. This is the strange play that Miami could not score an offensive touchdown, but on this what is called the immaculate interception, they wind up taking it in for the six points, and they go on to win the national championship. Ron Franklin along with Mike Gottfried, welcome. Mike, let's go back to last year and explain to our audience, what did Boston College do last year that so frustrated this Hurricane team? Ron, Boston College last year played a lot of deep zone coverage, and they said, hey, you're not going to throw it over our head. You're going to work the length of the football field. Ken Dorsey got a little impatient last year. Three interceptions in the red zone. Don't look for him to make the same mistake tonight. He was, He'll take the short passes tonight. He was not pleased with that game he had last year up at Chestnut Hill. As you look at Larry Coker, second season as the Miami head coach, he is undefeated as a head coach and won the national championship last year. Let's go down to the sideline. Dave Ryan, what do you have for us, Dave? All right, Ron, thanks so much. The difficulties in facing Miami here at the Orange Bowl start for teams like BC when they get off their team charter plane. They're hit by that blast of high hot humid air when they first land here in Miami. It's very difficult to adjust to. Now, over the years, some programs have tried to come in maybe early Thursday for a Saturday game to get acclimated to the searing heat. But Tom O'Brien did not alter his travel at all. After their team practice and team meal, they flew in late last night, arriving at about 10 o'clock. One thing a little bit different, though, for BC, they had a game day walkthrough, something Tom O'Brien normally does not do. He decided to get his team at the hotel to avoid boredom, maybe a bit, be a bit more sharp against top right Miami tonight, Ron. Okay, Dave, uh, my recommendation to you is just what we've just done. As you look at the uh, head coach of the Boston College Eagles, and that's get out of that jacket. 86 <laughs> degrees. I'm not sure about the humidity. It's closer to 100%. It is a very warm, muggy, typical Miami evening for this time of year. Boston College won the toss, and they have deferred. Miami will receive... And are you surprised that Boston College is going this route, giving Miami the football No, no, I, I think they're going to try to get the ball in the second half, but they got better worry about Miami's special team's speed. This kick is going to go five yards deep in the end zone, and so they will start at the 20-yard line. Kim Dorsey, senior out of Orinda, California, and we'll get deeper into the story as the night goes on. His home is about five minutes from Cal Berkeley Stadium, and that's where he thought he was going to go. But uh, we'll elaborate on that as, as the evening progresses. But he is a seasoned veteran, and his teammates really enjoy the way he operates this team. And he has all the respect in the world, which makes a great deal of difference. Ron, he's a great quarterback. We're going to talk about him all evening. They come out of an eye formation. It's Beard in motion. They're going to throw one first down, and they get it to Beard. 25 to the 30. Andre Johnson, I beg your pardon. Beard went into motion. And let's take a look at the specialist after that 15-yard game. McGahee. He may be better than the running backs they had last year. It's amazing. Beard and Andre Johnson, who just caught the ball. Kellen Winslow. It's uh, Kellen Jr. He's still a pup, but he's going to be a great one. The offensive line, they're led by Romberg there in the middle. Maybe a better run-blocking team than the national championship team a year ago. From the 35, first running play. And it's he He's going to take it for short yardage, maybe a gain of three in the play, and the defensive starters for the Eagles. Now, this is an active and very good defensive front. Garay is the pass rusher and has the most sacks on the team. The linebackers, uh, I think this is a good group. They all run, and Churchu in the middle, you just say, hey, this guy's a football player. We'll talk about him all night. Former fullback at Clemson. In the secondary, the thing they worry about most, Lester and White, not very tall. Both of those gentlemen, about 5'8 and 5'9. That's difficult against a taller and good leaping secondary group or wide receivers for the Miami Hurricanes. Draw play. McGahan going to take it across the 40 to around the 44. It'll be short of the first down. Third and one as Churchu makes the tackle. Ron, as long as Miami doesn't run the football effectively against Boston College, they'll be able to play those deep zone coverages. But if Miami starts to run the ball, it's Katie bar the door. 
Rob Chudzinski is the offensive coordinator, and you think that his plan tonight is going to be just what we're seeing. Punch run, the, run, and then pass. Run the ball and hit the short passes. Two tight end alignment this time, only one wide receiver. Short drop and a quick out pass of that lone wide receiver, and that was very close. Johnson being covered out there on the, that side by Larry Lester, and he was coming up trying to make the pickoff. So it's going to be fourth down. Ken Dorsey lets this ball go a little bit uh, too far down the football field. Almost got it picked off by Lester. Got away from him a little bit. Andre Johnson is 6'3 or better, and uh, Lester, well, they say 5'7, and we give him 5'9. <laughs> Freddie Capshaw had one blocked against Florida does not get off a good first kick off the side of his foot and the bound inside the 30 now takes a huge Miami roll and they'll touch it dead at the 19. So that means onto the field comes Brian St. Pierre the senior out of Denver's Massachusetts. Mike interesting thing team captain I don't know if he's put a little more pressure on himself this year or not but he actually has more interceptions than he does touchdowns for this early in the season and Dana Bible the offensive coordinator feels like he's pressing a little bit trying to fit balls in that aren't there. Camilla the fullback Knight the tailback and we'll give you those lineups in just a moment play action on first down they go up to Camilla the fullback. Juggles it now goes across the 25 to the 26 and Jonathan Vilma the middle linebacker for the Hurricanes is there to make the tackle. Here's the group we're talking about Knight had a very good game last year Green had been suspended for the Miami outing so it's not a new thing for him to go up against the Canes. Burke the big time receiver for them coaches think this is going to be an outstanding offensive line. They're just really getting their baptism under fire. This is a tough group to have to learn against on the road in Miami. Hemings in motion, draw play, and the first carry of the night by Derek White. Now he's a water bug, and you give him a step in space, he is extremely good. Speaking of extremely good, the front four. Now they say they're not starters. They rotate eight guys. They don't have starters. They have eight people who play. William Joseph, many people think, maybe the first player chosen out of the state of Florida in the draft. Jonathan Vilma leads the team in tackles. This is a really good group of linebackers. Speaking of learning on the job, secondary for the most part is new, but it gets such a great push up front. It helps the young secondary tremendously. See if William Joseph and company can bring this third down situation to a halt. St. Pierre looking, still looking. Now runs, gets the pass away, and it is caught by Hemmings. And Hemmings is going to take the ball out to the 39-yard line, and the headgear comes flying out of the pile. Good for 11 yards. Now the key for Boston College is they want to negotiate first down, get at least four or five, so they don't have third and long. Here St. Pierre finds a, a throwing lane and gets the ball out to Hemmings, who made a good catch, Ron. It gets good pressure from the corner. Mike, how big is it to come up with that initial first down in hostile territory I like this? It's big that they stopped Miami on three downs and they got a first down. One setback, and that is Knight. They'll give it to him right up the middle. Finds an opening. This is what I mean. Has five and now six, almost seven yards in the play. Andre Roll is the guy who makes the tackle, but uh, you don't have to give him a real big opening. And you say, how large is this guy? He's only 5'9", 205, but very strong in, in the upper body and his legs. And he started against this Miami defense last year, but again, on first down, seven yards. That's the key. Playing in front of the chains, as Coach likes to say. On second down, they'll give it to him again. Tries to bounce to the outside. Gets by one tackler and then just gets destroyed by Matt Walters. At speed from the secondary, you got to go ahead and go north and south against Miami. Yes, because they run so well. Matt Walters just stayed with that play. He's the most consistent of the defensive linemen and makes that tackle on night. This is Sykes who is going to miss the tackle right there. Sykes is the young man who had the two interceptions against the uh, Florida Gators. One of over 95 yards. He returned for a touchdown. Play action on third and short. Looking, still looking. Only had a two-man route. He's going to try to run it and will not have the first down. 
That's the respect Boston College has for the Miami front four because you got third and one and you're trying to throw the football. So that's the respect they have for this defense. Two man route, those two receivers were to the left. He wound up having to roll to his right, so it was just up to him. McMiner will do the punting, and Ethnic Sands is the deep man for the Hurricanes. And as Mike said off the top of the telecast, keep a special eye on the, their special teams because they have speed to burn in all the return people. Good coverage kick, very high. Sands is going to run away from this one. It'll go five yards deep in the end zone. So we'll take a break following that 52 yard kick possession for each we have no score. Beautiful evening shot here in uh, Miami. Take a look at these numbers Miami offensively where they rank as far as the Big East in BC's defense sixth in the NCAA. And something's got to give tonight because <laughs> Miami runs the ball very successfully. Boston College stops the run very well. So something's got to give. So they started 80 yards away. McGee is the tailback and they fake it to him. Dorsey going to go on top and dumps it right over the middle. And he goes to McGee. He will take it almost for a first down to the 29 yard line. Derek Rossi, the senior out of Medford, New York, number 58, came over to make the tackle. We talked to Ken Dorsey the other day about Boston College. He said they make you be patient. I got to take the flat routes. He just took the little short dunk there for a good eight nine yards. That's what he has to do tonight. Mike it was interesting yesterday the humility that he showed when we asked him what was it that BC did and he said I take full responsibility. I wasn't prepared for what they threw at us. It's beard in motion goes back to the top of your screen but they give it to McGahey. And there's not much doing. This is a sticky defense, but enough for the first down. So the Hurricanes will move the chain as Tom Martin, the right defensive tackle out of Farmingdale, New Jersey, number 90, comes over to put the stop on him. Now, here's a question that, you know, physically, they had a very hot camp as far as Boston weather is concerned. But can you translate that into what they're going into here tonight? Mike? They're going to have to substitute because you know Miami's going to substitute defensive linemen. So Frank Spaziani, the defense coordinator, is going to have to do the same thing. That's Hill who goes in motion, pumps it once, now looking to go on top, gets it out of the flat and incomplete. It was Hill that they tried to get it to. Redshirt freshman out of Sunrise, Florida. Uh, to go back to what uh, your question is, if they don't substitute, you see Frank there. Frank did a great job last uh, year on this Miami offense. But if you don't substitute, you're going to see those defensive linemen with their tongues out in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Be, if not, they're, be yeah, they're always chasing Dorsey. Dorsey, two of four, 24 yards to start the ball game. You just joined us. 8:30 remaining, and no score. Roscoe Parrish, little redshirt freshman in motion. They go to running play, and McGahey breaks it to the outside. Has five, has ten, and cut it off as a game of 11, not 12 yards. It's a first down hurricane. Willis McGahey is averaging almost eight yards every time he touches the football. Boston College, pretty good defense right here. They stay square here. They just don't make the tackle. You can't miss the tackle right there. Brian Flores, yep. number 36, and that allows McGahee to get the secondary. Well, if you ask yourself, you know, where does this guy come from? Well, he's a sophomore. He played behind Portis in that group last year. Folks, this guy's been timed 4-3, and he weighs 210 pounds. Dorsey sets deep in the pocket. Good protection. Now dumps it out, and whoa! the hit on McGahey and I mean as soon as the ball got there number 36 Flores who missed that tackle a moment ago didn't miss that one right there. Ken Dorsey Ron is, uh, is going to look back on this he's got an open receiver in the flat to the left side can't see him there but then he rose out and uh, hung his receiver out to dry. The Flores again with a good hit. Yes he put the metal on him. Bullman and Metaline come in number 96 and 93. So the first substitution on the defensive line for BC. The second down and 10. And Dorsey, play action, pumped it, going to go on top. 
Got a man wide open, and that's Johnson. And Johnson winds up playing defensive back as the ball just seemed to hang up there forever. Paul Cook defensively. Yes, yeah, see, you're not going to get this early in the ball game. Uh, this is the same thing Ken Dorsey tried to do last year. He's going to pump and he tries to bite, uh, get Larry Lester to bite, but the safety rolls over the top, Paul Cook. So they're in pretty good shape for the deep ball. You're going to have to be patient, take the short routes, hit your tight end, Kellen Winslow over the middle on option routes. Dorsey now only two of seven, 24 yards. He has missed his last three. Roscoe Parrish comes to the bottom of the screen, number one. From right here in Miami. Dorsey going to run it at the 50, slides down, and let's see, he's going to get a very good spot. Frank Spaziani, uh, the defensive coordinator, is all the way out on the field screaming, that's a lousy spot, he said. Well, he got a great spot. <laughs> Josh Ott was the man who was coming after him, and I have to agree with Frank. I thought his uh, knee skidded at around the 47 and a half yeah, yard line. Where the ball was, Ron, it's about a half yard back. You see Ken Dorsey chooses to tuck the football and run for the first down. Now watch where he goes down. The ball is back behind him. They marked it whereas near his, uh, his midsection of his body. By the tip of the football. And that's one that got away there. I don't know about staying Frank too long there guys. <laughs> No, Frank's already on the next defensive play. <laughs> Ken Dorsey right here. They got a little twist on defensive line wise and somebody's out of their lane. But watch where he goes down. He almost goes down about the 47 48 yep. yard line. Yep. Well, he got a real nice spot. It is a moot point now. Eighth play of the drive. First down. Parrish lines up at quarterback. They'd like to run the quarterback draw. And that's what they do. He'll take it up into the line. Parrish, a high school quarterback, 5'9", 165 pounds. He is a 4'3 sprinter. And I was told at practice on Thursday that he threw a touchdown pass when he was in high school, a ball in the air covered 63 yards. Well, Roscoe will throw the football out of that set, but uh, he's more dangerous as a runner. 5'9", that's stretching him. <laughs> Ken Dorsey realigns at quarterback on that formation. They just send Dorsey as he comes out of the huddle, put him at wide receiver. Boston College showing blitz, and here they come. They pick it up. Now Dorsey gets the pass away, and he did the smart thing. He just threw it into the ground. Kellen Winslow was the closest man to it. And now players is the umpire trying to separate some players, and the umpire goes down. And you see. Spaz on the far sideline signaling, hey, throw a flag. Well, there should have been a flag thrown there somewhere. So it is third down, and Miami needs to take it to the 36-yard line to pick up the first down. He tried to hit Kellen Winslow over the middle on that last play. Here's a little... Looks as though they would not let go of Dorsey. And obviously his teammates took great exception to that. There's Winslow right there, Ron. Very good hands. From the pocket. Gets the pass out. And yes. Crawled. See where his knee went down. And Kevin Beard made the catch. I think it's a gain of six. If it is, that is enough for the first down. Very close. Might be a little short, Ron. Kevin Beard there. Beard with the catch again. He's taking that flat route. I don't think his knee even hit. Gray is going to belt Ken Dorsey, make him pay for that first down. And they stretch it out, and they miss this one just by a couple of inches. Well, Miami is going to go for this behind that big offensive line. Checking into the ball game is Eric Winston, a great looking freshman tight end out of Midland, Texas, Midland Lee High School. Number 87, 6'7, 275 pounds, and he was on a state championship team with now Texas running back Cedric Benson. A true freshman. Uh, they said he, his dad wanted to go to Texas AM. They could have used him today. They got beat, uh, but uh, he chose Miami. 
Now that he he's one of those all airport guys, but he seems to be able to play up to, to what he looks like. He's all airport, but he can play too. So here they come, two tight end alignment, I formation. Fourth down in just a couple of inches. You see Boston College creeping up, and they will give it to McGahee, and he'll have the first down. And where are they going to mark it? They're going to pick it up by maybe a half yard. Hill with a good block over there on the corner. In Miami, Larry Coker likes Eric Winston, too, because they went to two tight ends, and they ran behind Eric Winston on that play. He's the better blocker of the two tight ends. You look at Willis McGahee. Ron, you see the red line here. I like this line because it tells you exactly guys getting knocked off the ball and whether the offensive line or defensive line won the battle. We need to explain that is the line of scrimmage, that red line. And we'll show it to you from time to time, particularly when there is a question about whether a quarterback would be on the line of scrimmage. Reese Davis, let's check with you. All right, Ron, upstate from you guys, Florida State and Duke. You know, Duke's never stayed within 24, closer than 24 against Florida State. Here's Chris Ricks firing a dart in there to Robert Morgan, and Duke's fighting them early, but the Seminoles are on top in this game, 10 to 3, and Cal, in a lot of trouble. The fighting Jeff Tedford's down 8 against Air Force late in the fourth. So, time is back in, second down. And Churchill, the middle linebacker, went to the bench across the way. We'll try to see what things look like on him. McGahee, the intended receiver, as they had circled him out of the backfield, and the pass is incomplete. So Ray Henderson, number three, is checked into the lineup, but he's only a redshirt freshman. Churchill on the bench, the senior, and of course uh, they need the young man from Paramus, New Jersey. Transferred from Clemson. That's right. And Mike, he was a fullback. Yeah, there. he was a fullback. He hasn't played linebacker since he was a sophomore in high school. But that takes a good coach to see a guy when he transferred and said, hey, I'm going to make you a linebacker. It takes a good coach to see he has those qualities. You know what, Alter? He made an observation I think is great. He said, it, it helps me having played the position to pick up backs out of the backfield. That pass is going to go incomplete. Intended for Andre Johnson here on the short side of the field. And so far, Miami offensively stuttering. Same game plan last year. Make them work the football field, and they're not able to do it again tonight. Andre Johnson should have had that one, no they, question. They may pooch kick this. Well, field goal attempt of 52 yards. Got the distance, and no good, wide right. The longest receivers in his career, 53, had the distance, but not the accuracy. We'll take a break. Still no score. ESPN's College Football Saturday Night, presented by the United States Postal Service. Brought to you by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. And by Bowflex. Visit Bowflex online at www.bowflex-endzone.com. 5.06 left to play in this opening quarter, and here's what these two teams have done in the first quarter this year. Boston College, they have not scored Miami 45 points, and they have allowed no points. Miami has it in the first quarter. Here's what Miami did on that last drive, 14 plays, 45 yards, 4 minutes and 40 seconds, and it ended with a missed field goal. We see Derek Knight again, the junior out of Westwood, Massachusetts, number 20. And you give it to him off the left shot, cuts it right up the middle, and he's going to squirt his way for about seven yards. And again, they're playing in front of the chains here. He's got to continue to do that all night long. Yeah, Jonathan Vilma made the tackle, and when you watch tape on Miami, he hardly ever gets blocked because his front four is so solid. Receiver set as you look into the eyes of Jonathan Vilma. Pressure off the corners. Now steps up and he's going to run. He's got a lot of room. 50 at the 45. Heads to the sideline at St. Pierre. He's going to take that thing all the way down to the 41 yard line. Game of 17. Reese Davis, what do you got? Alabama and Southern Mississippi. Ron Tyler Watts sprained an ankle. He's out for the game. Brody Croyle, the highly touted freshman, known for his arm. 
but showing off his speed against Southern Mississippi, improvising and scoring the Crimson Tide on top of the Golden Eagles. Game going on in ESPN2, 14-0 in the second. South Carolina is starting to assume control against Temple, and that's a two-touchdown game as well. All right, we're starting to play Brody, uh, Brady Cole a little bit more in that football team. Here we go with a running play at night. And he's going to go for short yardage, about two and a half, maybe three. Jonathan Vilma records still another tackle. Mike, one other comment about that game. Southern Mississippi has got one of my favorite players in the country, and that's Nix, the running back. We a big back, uh, runs hard, run. Catches well out of the backfield. I talked to uh, Chris Seflo this week, the Tulane coach. He believes Southern Miss is for real, and uh, he felt like they challenged Alabama tonight. Still no score here. Boston College with their first drive across midfield. Pressure up the middle, hit behind the line of scrimmage. Here comes a late flag in, and I don't think, no, he did not get back to the line of scrimmage. It's William Joseph and Vince Wilfork combined on the stop. They're offside, though. He's a little bit fast uh, out of the gate. Looks like Big William was uh, right here. He's a little bit fast. Uh, William Joseph uh, trying to read that snap count. Bit too soon. And if you say, well, there's a Joseph who plays offense also, Carlos, that that is his little brother. Uh, they are born to Haitian immigrant uh, parents, both outstanding football players deciding to come here to the University of Miami and uh, play football and also get their degrees. And both of them, the young one's going to be good too. Yeah, uh, William's going to have a lot of money here real soon. Brandon Brokaw, number 30, checks in at tailback for the Eagles, and they give it to him. Cuts it up the middle. He is going to have the first down as he goes inside the 30-yard line. And this right here is exactly what Tom O'Brien would like to see happen. It doesn't matter how non-flashy it is, but that clock is just moving, moving, moving. And that means that the Miami offense is not on the field. And talking to some of the coaches, they talked about how loose this football team was tonight when they came out here when they were at the high school field they really feel like they could come in here if they keep a loose attitude they can make this game close first and ten crowd coming to life as they move into the student section Knight back in the ball game turns the corner he's going to have five yards I'll tell you what happened on that workout at the high school today and I, I was told that it shows just how loose this team is, just what you're talking about. One of the bus drivers decided he was going to move from one side of the parking lot to the other, drove through a soft area, and stuck the bus. So all the players got off that bus, and they had to move another one up, play bumper cars, and give it a shove. And said the players and coaches all were laughing and very loose and having a good time. Yeah, most coaches would have said, you're fired. Uh, the bus driver. <laughs> well, they're hoping their offense doesn't get stuck <laughs> like their charter bus today. Second down, they need to take it just inside the 20. That's Hemmings in motion. Hit behind the line of scrimmage. Good heavens, Jonathan Vilma was almost there to the ball as quickly as Derek Knight was when he got the handoff. Yeah, it was Dan Morgan's understudy. He's a leading tackler on this football team. And as I said before, it's very difficult to get to him to block because you got to double all those uh, two of those defensive linemen. You also could see number 17, that's D.J. Williams coming through and applying pressure, getting penetration. It's a fine group of linebackers, but how many how many years running have we said that about Miami? Third down. Ron, right here is Jamal Burke. He's the most reliable receiver on this B.C. receiving core. St. Pierre. Got a man right over the middle, throws it to Hemmings, and it is a first and goal, Boston College. Gain of 18 yards as Roll made the tackle, but they slipped him right down the seam, down the middle, and the pass was thrown perfectly. Remember what Randy Shannon told us the other day, he, the defensive coordinator, he said he likes to throw the seam route, and he hit Keith Hemmings, a beautiful pass down the middle. Good blocking by that offensive front of Boston College as well. So here we go, first and goal. 
They tried the run, not much there, and this is where you get in trouble. You can't him and haul. You got to take it up and get what you can. Are you going to be knocked down for a loss? Rocky McIntosh defensively. The reason he was him and the haul is because there was no place to go. He was looking, trying to find a little fit yeah. somewhere in that defensive line, but they won the battle on that play. Mike, you saw him come back to the huddle and pat himself yeah. on the chest, saying, "Hey, my bad to the offensive lineman." Yeah, I would have told him, you're bad. Hey, you guys <laughs> blocked those guys. Still second down and goal. They lost about a yard, maybe a yard and a half in the play. St. Pierre retreats to throw. Here comes the pressure. Hit from behind, loses the football, and it's recovered by St. Pierre. Andrew Williams, the senior from Tampa, by the way, of Hines Junior College, is the one who forced the issue. Had four quarterback sacks last year. It really beats the block. He just roars up the football field. Beats the block to Leo Bell. And uh, Brian St. Pierre, very fortunate to get that football back. Now you want to make sure you at least get three here now in uh, long distance. That is the end of the first quarter, so they get a chance to talk it over. And as we head to the second 15 minutes, Miami nothing and the Eagles nothing. We'll be right back. Our aerial views are courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. And with this Goodyear's blimp, Stars and Stripes continue with a 77-year tradition as the aerial ambassador and icon of the 102-year-old company. Great shots tonight, and this is always a pretty, pretty sight, the city of Miami by night. Tenth play of the drive coming up. The ball is back at the 21, and it's third down and goal. You set during the timeout. They're going to make sure they get points. You've got to get points. Don't get a turnover right here. And you can't be set. You've got to throw it away if you can. St. Pierre puts it in the stomach of his running back and that's exactly what they're going to do. They want to make sure that they do come away with three points. Uh, Knight is going to take it for a short game. Will Fork and Roll combining on the stop. Now if you ask the question about Scortino the kicker his longest is 40 yards and that came against Stanford. It's also a career best. And this attempt is going to come from 35 yards away. Get it down, plenty of distance on this one, and Boston College goes on top first. So we'll take a break. 14-21 left until halftime. Three to nothing, Eagles. Boston College three to nothing. And a reminder: Sunday night football on ESPN at 8:30 Eastern. Michael Vick takes center stage in prime time. The Atlanta Falcons play host to the Cincinnati Bengals. Coverage will begin with NFL Prime Time, presented by Miller Lite, set 7:30 Eastern. And for more on our upcoming games, log into ESPN.com, and the keyword is schedule. Ron, I'm going to watch that game. Gus Farad uh, getting the start for the Bengals, and uh, hoping he does well in this football game. Were it done. Uh, Duckett, Tico Duckett are the running backs for Atlanta, so uh, should be a good game. Here comes the kick. Bounds at the 10-yard line and is picked up by Gethers. 20, 25, across the 30, and he'll take it out close to the 35-yard line. Reese Davis, an update on the Longhorns. On the Longhorns playing Houston, you know what Roy Williams calls this when Chris Sims is able to do this? He says just Chris playing with his toys. The prototype quarterback to the legend and wide receiver Roy Williams into the house and the Longhorns on top 7-0 in the first. Now this is the last in that series which has been a long one between uh, Houston and Texas. I don't know if they're going to renew that thing anytime soon. Roy Williams certainly one of the best if not the best wide receiver in the country at 6'5", 215 and Runs a 4-5-40. Uh, Dorsey pumps, going to go on top. And overthrown Andre Johnson is the man that he was looking for. You can see the coverage by Larry Lester, the redshirt freshman out of Piscataway, New Jersey. Again, you see the deep coverage uh, by Miami, and then the corner is going to fall off there, too. They're trying not to let anything be thrown over top their head.
Same plan they had last year. Don't give Miami anything easy. Dorsey started off like two of three, and now he is one of eight since for only four yards. Sets in the pocket again. Over the middle. Got it complete. This is Kellen Winslow. And across midfield, and he's going to be tackled. See where they're going to spot it at the 46 yard line. A 19 yard gain before Bissett knocks his feet out from under him. He's got to be able to take a chance and throw to Kellen Winslow because he's open over the middle. Kellen Winslow runs a 4 6 40, and Larry Coker says he's got great hands. A little nervous before the Florida game played very well leading receiver on this Miami team also has been a good special teams player for them and as the coaches call it is that he's still a pup but he has so much talent go to the running play and it's McGay he turns the corner has five has ten is still fighting and he's going to have 15 yards on a second effort and the crowd loves it the set again making the tackle and Besides good blocking of the offensive front, watch this effort after a gain of about eight. Yeah, you see the pulling guard out front of McGahee, good block, and he gets in the secondary, and it's important, and you've heard me say it many times, when a team scores, you've got to answer the score right away. Well, Miami is uh, sending a statement so far. It is first down at the 29. And they'll give it back to him again. And he's going to be stymied this time after a very short gain on the play. In fact, uh, McGahee got uh, twisted back around as Ledbetter, a senior out of Jersey City, New Jersey, is the man who came over to make the tackle. And Miami's not used to having to work the field. Their average scoring drive this year is a minute 22. So they, they like to get them quick. Sometimes you lose your patience because they make you go the length of the field. Roscoe Parrish at the ball game, number one. And they throw back into the tight end, and Winslow had his feet taken out from under him as he's knocked down by Trevor White. Reese Davis, let's go back to you. Florida State starting to pour it on against Duke. 10 3 game at this point in the second quarter. Chris Ricks, plenty of time. Alvin Gardner. Touchdown. Seminoles march it right back down the field. This time going to give the fullback a chance to touch. Lawrence Washington plowing in there. It's 24-3 still in the first half. Our situation, three to nothing by Boston College Eagles as we go under 12 minutes in this first half. But the most serious threat of the night right now by Miami. Third down. They need to take it to the 19-yard line. Dorsey steps up. Still looking. Got a man open, throws it in and out of the hands. His boy, Roscoe Parrish, got leveled by Ralph Parent. Well, you talk about a hit now. He lost his mouth guard uh, on that play, but uh, the big thing is the receiver lost a football. Roscoe Parrish got jarred right here. Here's a red line, so you see how close Ken Dorsey gets close to the red line before he throws that football. And Ralph Parent just really made Parrish pay. So Sievers tries to tie it up with a 45-yard attempt. Good pass, plenty of distance, and we're knotted. Let's take a break. 11:38 left until halftime, and we are tied. Miami three, NBC three. ESPN's College Football Saturday Night, presented by the United States Postal Service, brought to you by Gateway, where you've got a friend in the business. And by Quaker State. For performance you can count on, Quaker State. Stay tuned. Well, Mike, for people that thought the Boston College Eagles, who are huge underdogs in this ballgame, could not keep it uh, level with the Miami Hurricanes, uh, they're finding out that uh, this is a very determined group. Stand right in there. Uh, Virginia Tech, Miami clearly at the top of the Big East. Boston College trying to submit that third spot. And challenge. Todd Seavers kickoff. Very high. This one is returnable. Well, I say that's going to go two yards deep. You're going to bring it out. That's Blackman. And against a team as quick as Miami, that's a mistake. Anytime it's in the end zone, take a knee. 
The last series, Ron, here's the first down place. We talked about staying ahead of the chains. Here, Derek Knight just busts through and picks up six good yards. Here's a delayed draw, missed tackle. Uh, pretty good yards. Here's a bounce out play. Power play gets in the secondary, and there's the one play Miami stopped on first down. Forced the field goal. I'll tell you one guy who has not been missing tackles is number 51. Yeah. Jonathan Vilma. He already had at the end of the first quarter five tackles. Here comes the crowd. Trying to pick up that defense. Hit behind the line of scrimmage, and again, this time it's Horace Dodd who gets knocked down for a loss. Reese Davis, let's check again with you. See you. Wildcats responding quite well. L. Roberson getting the bulk of the work at quarterback, hitting Taco Wallace 29 yards to the one. Roberson then punched it in. K State up 10 0 on the throw. Talk about some difficult places to play yeah. in Manhattan. Nice. You've been big, in there. That's a big game for Southern Cal to prove whether they're back or not. Second down and about 13. St. Pierre going to go on top down the far sideline, throws into double coverage. And Joel Hazard had a chance of catching that ball. Number 17, the sophomore out of Marietta, Georgia. But Kelly Jennings and Maurice Sykes were over in double coverage. And a good coverage. Uh, all of a sudden, Miami's going to say, Kelly Jenkins, Jennings, you're going to bump and run the wide receivers. Mike, you could see that huge cast on the arm of Kelly Jennings. He's a redshirt freshman out of Live Oak, Florida. The coaches think this kid is going to be another in a long line of great defensive back. And they lost their whole secondary, and so everybody thought that would be a weakness. It's not. Third down. They need to take it to the 24. Here comes the pressure for the outside. Flag goes down. And now they're going to whistle the play halted. A little movement in the offensive line. Dead ball. Ball starts. Up fence. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. What Dana Bible told me the other day that Miami feasts on you when you're third and long. That's when they step it up a little bit more on defense. And this crowd's going to get in this football game on this play. Mr. Tom Zick, the referee tonight. Of course, this is a Big East crew being a Big East Conference game. That's the first penalty against Boston College tonight. Not a real good time and place for it to happen. It's third down, and they're scrimmaging from their own seven-yard line. Horace Dodd is the tailback. Started off his career at Penn State, but they wanted him to be a linebacker. And he said, I want to carry the football. So he transferred to Boston College. Doesn't know this system yet. Dana Bible likes to spot him right now because he doesn't know the entire package. Big strong fellow though at 6'1", 207. Well, that noise is deafening right there behind him. St. Pierre sets in the pocket. Now steps up and over the middle throws. Incomplete. Boston College wants a flag and they get it. Sean Ryan, the tight end, is who they were looking for. D.J. Williams. D.J. Williams. He's a man, I believe, who was holding on. He had his left hand on the back of Sean Ryan. Here's the pressure from the outside. Yep. And he grabbed him, and a uh, good call by the back judge. Embraced him with the right arm. And the difficult thing here. I've never heard as far it said as like that. <laughs> Embracing. There are a lot of different ways to say a lot of different things, Michael. Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator, the thing that he has to be upset about here is the fact that you let him off the hook. It is by measurement that they could pick up the first down, but they're still going to be about three yards short. But that's a lot better situation yes. than what they had. And it is first down. So that's the killer park right there. 
You have held them, and you're going to get really good field position. You give them a new set of downs. And Coppin, the senior out of Apex, North Carolina, comes out over the football to center, number 77. St. Pierre keeps it on the ground, puts the head down as Horace Dodd. And Reese Davis, let's check with you again. Okay, Ron, Texas and Houston. Mac Brown lining up for a field goal against the Cougars. Trickeration. Bo Trahan right up the gut and into the end zone. By the way, Roy Williams was helped off the field into the locker room in this game with the Longhorns up 14 0. We'll keep an eye and update you on Williams when we can. Trahan, who is an excellent special teams player, the first man that Mac Brown signed when he became the head coach at the University of Texas. Brown again, and there's nothing. Maybe a gain of one. And Dave Ryan down on the sideline. What do you have for us? Ron, a very emotionally charged BC sideline here. Brian St. Pierre was named tribe captain in the preseason for a very good reason, his leadership skills. In the first quarter during that drive that spanned the end of the first, beginning of the second, a long 17-yard keeper, he was shouting to teammates both on and off the field, shouting, let's go. Really emotionally charged and led the cheers. When Sanders Cortino hit the field goal, they gave him some points. Showing good leadership as well, good poise. Very loud side of the field. The Miami cheering section just behind him. Hey, Dave, the other thing, the defense has kept Miami from the big play. That's the reason we're tied at three. St. Pierre gets this but not complete to Adams. And Adams is going to take it to around the 35-yard line, and that's enough for another first down. Boston College had an open date last week and that was big for them in their offensive planning because they took a lot of things that they usually go into a game with Tom O'Brien Dana Bible the offensive coordinator because of Miami's defense they just threw them out so they've got a nice game plan with 10 days of preparation for this defense. Harris just checked out of the lineup and big William Joseph comes back in at defensive tackle. Flag in the secondary here. Substitution on Miami. Yeah, they got 12 men on the field right now. So is it going to be illegal participation or illegal substitution on the defense, Mike? And they're going to stop them one way or, or another. Five yard penalty. First down. This gives you a lot of options though. Now first and five. Would you try to go downtown or just continue to do what you're doing? Just continue to move the chains, keep the ball away from the offense of uh, Miami and uh, keep Ken Dorsey on the sidelines. 9.05 left to play until halftime. Tied at three. Boston College, a lot of communication with that offensive line, making sure everybody knows their assignment is. St. Pierre, pressure coming on, he's going to be sacked. But he did the smart thing, he could feed it coming, so he just embraced the football as Andrew Williams will knock him down. It's not a bad play call right here. He's just trying to throw a curl route to the tight end, Ryan, but uh, just couldn't get it off. You see the push that uh, William Joseph gets, number 94. He's had to be double teamed, and he backed everybody in to the face of St. Pierre. Mike, we always talk about how well everybody on Miami runs. There's a case in point. William Andrews, 99, who just had the sack. He weighs 262 now, but he was a linebacker, and they beat him up. This is Dodd, puts a head down for maybe a couple of yards to the 42-yard line. McDougal making the tackle. Another one of the uh, specialists for the University of Miami. He's uh, he's their leading rusher of the passer. Ron, he's the guy I like the best in practice. Jerome McDougal. He's big. He's, uh, he's 6'2", 260. He can run. He's very explosive. Got quick hands. He's had a route here. He started at Pittsburgh State. Transferred to Heinz Junior College and came here. A lot of frequent flyer miles. And he signed with originally signed with Maryland out of high school. So been all over signing grants. Eighth play of the drive. They need to take it to the 45-yard line. St. Pierre short drop, throws it and boy, in and out of the hands of Burke. Maybe a tad behind him, but Jamal should have had that one. 
that would have been another first down. Yeah, Jamal Burton gets away with a push off here. You're going to see him work on the linebacker right here. Jamal Burton come in the outside linebacker. I missed the right linebacker, but he pushed off to get open, got away with it. McMiner comes in to punt again. Second punt of the night by the Eagles. Ethnic Sands is the deep man. He's retreated to the 15. Good passer coming after him. Wobbly spiral, and Sands is going to pick it up at the last moment and be tackled immediately at the 21. So we'll take a break. 7.20 remaining until halftime. 38 yards in the punt. We're tied. Well, tonight's half and half trivia question. Before Ken Dorsey, who was the last Division I A quarterback to win 25 straight games as a starter? We'll have that answered later on. Total yards for Miami tonight, 107, 59 yards rushing and 48 yards passing. Fumbled the snap and Dorsey does the smart thing. He just falls on it. They're going to lose a couple of yards. Turchu right there on top of him quickly. Kyle Cobia is in the ball game. First time that he has seen action. He's been on the shelf with an injury. Number 40, a sophomore out of Lakeland, Florida, and they line him up at fullback. He catches the ball well also. 6'2", 236 pounds. Kyle Cobia. Here comes the blitz from the safety. Going to go on top, and a lot of pushing and shoving out there between Andre Johnson and the defender, Larry Lester. And let's check again with Reese Davis. Ron USC picked up an L. Roberson fumble, ran it in for a touchdown. Here's the point after try right now, and Henry Bryant blocks it, and the ball is picked up by Terrence Newman, the nation's sixth leading punt returner. Good guy to get his hands on the ball. Hello, Newman. Goodbye, Newman. Take it all the way the other way for the two-pointer for the Wildcats, and K-State a little bit of an edge at the half, 12 to 6. <laughs> well, this continues to amaze me. Special teams have just not had a good year all over college football. Screen pass, McGahee gets by, nope, not going to get by the tackle. Knocked down by number 21, Trevor White. That's a nice job by White. If he doesn't knock his feet out from under him, that could have gone for a big gainer. He's made a couple sure fire tackles coming out of the secondary on plays that could have been big plays. So Freddie Capshaw had a punt blocked against the University of Florida. Senior out of Rock Springs, Wyoming. Burke is the deep man. High pass from center, but he gets the kick away, and it's a dandy. Burke all the way back to the 33, and he just gets smacked. High and low. What good coverage. 45 yards in the kick. Minus one on the return. We'll take a break. Well, the answer to tonight's Affleck trivia question. Before Ken Dorsey, who was the last Division I A quarterback to win 25 straight as a starter? Well, it was right here in the state of Florida. Chris Winkie. And the 26 game lost at Miami, 27 to 24, on October the 7th, 2000, and that was on Ken Dorsey's touchdown pass to Jeremy Shockey with 46 seconds. Burke and Hemmings flipping to the top of your screen, split wide to the left side. St. Pierre. Looking back to the near side and just throws that one away. We're going to get a penalty on Ruff and the passer on DJ Williams. That's his second penalty. That's right. DJ had the pass interference call that kept the drive going for Boston College. They got no points, but still it flipped the field as far as the position. Ruff and the passer on the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. And we talked about Brian St. Pierre maybe not making the best decisions. He makes a great decision here. He checks the left side. Now he throws the football away, and here's the penalty. 
He clearly threw the ball away. Smart move. So the first down is now out at the 49 yard line. And the clock is stopped five minutes and 44 seconds left until intermission. And we're still tied at three. Derek Knight checks back in the ballgame at tailback number 20 and also a fullback Camella. We give it to Knight. Bounces up the middle. And he's going to have about three yards in the play, and that's it. Rocky McIntosh, number 50, down at the bottom of that pile. You talk about Camella now. Camella's not ever going to carry the football. Now, you know if you're a fullback for Boston College right here, you're never going to carry the football. You're going to block. Does a nice job of blocking. Now, every now and then, they'll keep you happy, throw the ball to you in the flat. But you're a blocker first. That's right. He caught on the opening play yeah, tonight. First they, play. That same play that Maryland ran, ran against FSU last week. That's right. They were watching TV. Second down. Man at the top of the eye is Knight. And here he goes. Going to have the first down. Are very close to it. I may have spoken prematurely, but from where the uh, the linesman is coming on this side, it would appear that he is going to have it. Uh, Marshall, Alfonso Marshall defensively for the Hurricanes. Yeah, Derry Knight's been impressive here in the first half. Fastest player on this BC team, 100 meter, meter champ in New England high school uh, track, just bobs and weaves and uh, picks up the first down. Tell you what, Mike, a nice job by Mark Parento, number he's, 73. He's a good tackle now. He uh, he led it with a good block and also Frank Wilpert, number 69, a junior out of Oak Ridge, New Jersey. So it is a first down, and the Eagles move the chains again. Straight up the middle. Going to play it conservative and play it smart as Brandon Brokaw will take it for a gain of about five. Well, this Monday Night Countdown, delivered by UPS at 7.30 Eastern, joins Stuart Scott and the best in the business for all the news from week number three in the NFL. Then at 9 o'clock, it's ABC Monday Night Football, Al Michaels and John Madden in Tampa Bay. Can St. Louis afford to lose a third straight? Billy Warndell, he can't afford to lose that game. Brokaw stays in the ballgame at tailback. Now he is the largest of the tailbacks at 6'2", 241 pounds. On second down, they go back to Brokaw. Right up the middle, puts a head down, stumbling forward. He's going to have another Boston College first down. And the clock, when it starts again, will start from 3 minutes and 48 seconds as McIntosh tripped him up. But look at the line blocking assignments here and a nice job. Camella again with a good lead block on DJ Williams. They're getting introduced to each other on every play. Well, a lot of people, including myself, didn't think you could run on Miami as well as BC is running here. 22 runs, only six passes. Mike. What do you have to do that if you're uh, if you're Randy Shannon do you have to start gambling more and start loading up the box and say you're going to have to beat us with the pass we're going to make you throw the football I think maybe first before you do that a little more line movement a little slants and loops and uh, try to get those try to uh, get those linemen active right here I, I just really like this front six front seven of Miami and it's uh Got to give Dana Bible and Tom O'Brien credit. Uh, they have done a nice job preparing a good package for this Miami defense. Kamala in motion to the bottom of your screen. And they give it to Brokaw. Puts a head down and he drives the pile backwards. And Dave Ryan, let's check with you again. Ron, to start the broadcast, we talked about the heat and humidity for Boston College. Really not much of a factor for the Eagles. One reason, perhaps, the BigFog.com fans. BC trainer Steve Bushy asked the fan operator to crank up all six to the max missed flow. The players were overheated to start the game, and now they're not bothered at all. And Steve said a moment ago to me, guys, a lot of wind flow coming through as well, so it's very comfortable for the Eagles on the field tonight. Okay, it also lets you know how that wind is beginning to pick up from the south. Uh, hope Hurricane Isidore is a long way from here, but it's kicking up a little bit of a win here at the Orange Bowl. You see the blitz all out, and they go with the running play, and Brokaw takes it down inside the 25 to around the 23-yard line. 
Brokaw's 240 pounds, and they say he's got great hands as a pass receiver out of the backfield. But trying to rotate those three tailbacks to keep them fresh. Also, they're rotating offensive linemen as well. Hoffman checked back into the ball game just a moment ago. You see Brokaw going to the bench. And last tackle was made by Vilman. That should give him six on the night. Derek Knight has come back in a tailback, replacing Brandon Brokaw. Here they come. Miami showing blitz. And Mike Trike, here they come. Breaks off one tackle, not going to break off the second one. And this third down play is going to go for naught. Well, they're very fortunate, Ron. They didn't pick up another 15-yard penalty because as uh, one of the defensive backs joined in, uh, I believe, roll number six on this play near the sideline. Derek Knight, no place to go. You see D.J. Williams do a good job of uh, throwing the fullback away. See the hits there late. Very fortunate. I think Didn't that was Wilma that came in late, actually, and shoved the pile. Uh, out of bounds and one of the young the female trainers he is being attended to on the sideline. She appears to be okay and we'll take a timeout with 118 left until halftime tied at three and the Eagles looking to go on top. Our aerial shots are courtesy of Goodyear who would like to remind you to take all of life's journeys on the wings of Goodyear. Mike, here's a stat for you. Last time Miami trailed at halftime was to Washington, 21 to 3. And that was September the night. The year was 2000. This is going to be a 41 yard attempt by Scortino. That's a good pass. And he's got it. So Boston College with 113 to play until intermission looking up at the scoreboard and they're on top by a field goal six to three. What do you think Mike? Now they held them without an offensive touchdown last year done the same thing here in the first half. You got to take your hat off Frank Spaziani the defensive coordinator and the effort of his defensive football team. They're playing the same kind of game they played last year at Boston. Brian St. Pierre senior captain uh, co-captain of this uh, football team for Boston College you can see his reaction and there's uh, Frank Spaziani uh, the defensive coordinator and the head coach Tom O'Brien so far they're that week off, they, they, yeah, they, they the week, it well we helped them and let's check in with Reese Davis All right Ron coming up on the Saturn halftime report the Irish sort of made their own luck by arming for battle Buckeyes got a scare and almost saw 81 years of history go right down the tubes and we'll check in on Rocky Top our game day gang they got drenched and Tennessee got soaked as well we'll see you in just a little bit. So 113 left on the clock and Mike I'm not sure I'd kick it to these two return guys I'm not too sure I wouldn't line drive it or squid it one of the two but he kicked it away in the end zone yep and that's exactly what he did so good plan Ron Franklin Mike Godfrey along with Dave Ryan we have 113 showing on the clock until halftime and it's Boston College a four touchdown underdog coming into this ball game on top of number one Miami six to three Mike, this crowd all of a sudden has gone very, very silent. They're heading for hot dogs. Getting ready for a fireworks in the second half. Let's see if Miami plays it conservatively here or if they give a couple of uh, shots downtown. Beard and Johnson to the bottom of your screen. Dorsey throws this one up. Got it complete. Did he hold on? Yes, that is a masterful job by Andrew Johnson. Had orthoscopic surgery just not very long ago. After practice on Thursday, they encased his knee in ice. But I'll tell you, he showed what a tough cookie he is right there. That's a great catch. He gets With whacked. Great concentration. The set hits him on the sideline, but he holds on to the football. What a terrific job of concentration. From the 45, he gets this pass away. Kellen Winslow. Gets by the first tackle, and Churchill will knock him down, but it's on the BC side of the 50 yard line. They heard that stat you gave that uh, the last <laughs> time they were behind. They don't want to hear that anymore. Nope. Clock is running. 50 seconds, and now down to 49. 
That's the yard line that they occupy right now. Dorsey gives it to his running back. McGahee is loose. Got one man to beat in the secondary. 15 at the 10, at the 5, and he's down to the 1. First and goal, Miami Hurricane. You can't relax against this offense. They run the draw play. Good job blocking up front by Romberg, the center. McGee, he's loose in the secondary. Gets a nice block from his wide receiver. Lester is the man who saved a touchdown. It was a 48-yard run, and the scrimmage play came from the 49. But they still got 31 seconds showing on the clock. He shows you his strength there as he just pushed away the defensive back. Yeah, it was a good stiff arm as he made the slide to the outside, Mike, here to the our side of the field. McGahee now nine carries, 92 yards. He came into this ball game tonight averaging 7.8 per try. Thursday night on ESPN at 7.30. Chris Ricks, Greg Jones, and the Florida State Seminoles take on Dave Ragone and the Louisville Cardinals. College Football Thursday night presented by Circuit City on ESPN. Well, Louisville gets a chance to atone for a tough start against the Seminoles. And that offensive line is going to get tested on Thursday. They're going to get a big test. <laughs> Dockett and some of the his friends, closest friends will be uh, trying to get to know Ragone. Colby comes into the lineup at fullback. The tailback will be Willis McGahee. Miami's got all three timeouts left, so they'll lock Dorsey time. hands it off to McGahee. Left side, he will score. Touchdown. Kyle Colby with an outstanding block, and McGahee takes it in for six. seconds on the scoring drive. Well, you can count Andre Johnson and Ken Dorsey with a big play. That big catch and then McGahee's big run. Two big plays. Extra point by Severs is up and is good. Now we've uh, got some players being separated and a flag has been thrown. Here's the touchdown. Well, Mike, you talk about his power. He He's got just... good, strong legs. It's a good block from Eric Winston, number 87. There's Kobe's block. Mm -hmm. He kicked his man out. I'm wondering, this flag, there was a collision. Sievers had his leg hit on the follow-through after the kick had gone, and that's when the flag came into the, into the fray. Personal foul on the kicking team. <laughs> so the Miami Hurricanes go on top 10 to 6 with 28 seconds showing on the clock. Look at that. Four plays, 80 yards, 45 seconds of McGahee. The 49 yards of the touchdown, but the long 48 yarder is the one that uh, broke BC's back. Yeah, that and uh, Andre Johnson's great hands on the sideline. Yes. Two clutch plays by a, two outstanding players that are big in clutch situations. Now, BC's got 28 seconds. Miami's going to have to kick off from the 20. So they've got time. They got three timeouts, 28 seconds to get. They can get some kind of kick return here and put themselves in good shape. Can't rest when you're playing Miami because of the speed of their football team. Five penalties on Miami in the first half.
three of the five are major penalties. And we'll see if this one right here comes back to hurt them. Todd Sievers prepares to kick it off. Squibs it. Picked up at the 20 yard line by Blackman. Tries to get to the open side of the field and he's not going anywhere. Well, to all the military doctors, nurses, and aides assigned to the Landstuhl Regional Medical Center in Germany, keeping our troops healthy and fit so that they can protect the United States. Thanks for all you do, and also thanks for watching tonight's game on AFN Europe. May take one throw down the field here, Ron. Try to get uh, get a long pass here. One shot. Derek Knight, the tailback. St. Pierre, under pressure, going to run it. 30, 35, has the first down at the 40, and then slides down wisely. Got what he could, and is down at the 47. And now they'll use another timeout. It's a gain of 20. Sean Taylor was there defensively. They caught... Miami in a uh, five under man coverage, which means all the receivers are going to be man. So all those defensive backs and linebackers turned their back to the football. That's why Brian St. Pierre was able to tuck it in and pick up good yardage. What you have to be so careful of when you're playing Miami is like in the Florida game, the Gators are driving to score, and uh, Sykes steps in front, makes an interception, and takes it back for a 97 yard touchdown you're about to score and all of a sudden it's a 14 point swing and you can't catch up in uh, Florida with a big win today over uh, Tennessee in the rain uh, Grossman really Ron played a great football game he got hit hammered by this Miami defense and he got hammered today by Tennessee's but uh, showed you a great performance today in that ball game. You know Mike besides throwing the ball well he also had a long scramble that really got them going to the ball game and I thought was one of the key momentum continuers if you will that uh, allowed them to they went on in and scored and all of a sudden in less than four minutes they put 21 points on the board. Play of that game was Graham taking that football over the line. <laughs> yeah. That'll be argued for a long time in uh, Knoxville, I think. Our situation, 10-6 Miami. 12 seconds left until halftime. St. Pierre throws it to the near sideline, and Jamal Burke will step out of bounds at the 45. So that stops the clock with seven ticks. Jamal Burke is a big receiver, 6'1", 207. Does a nice job of positioning himself and uh, separating from the defensive back. Mike, they're going to have to get this one done in a hurry. It's Cortino, uh, the longest one that, that he has, I believe that I read a while ago, is 40 yards. So they're going to have to get this ball down the field a pretty good distance to put him within his range. Seven ticks left. St. Pierre right over the middle. It is tipped and it's intercepted. Roll. And Roll is finally going to be tackled as he fights his way to the 46-yard line. And with that, the clock has run out. We've still got some embracing and pushing and shoving down on the sideline. Let's take one more look at the interception. Yeah, that's an interception that Brian St. Pierre is just trying to get some points on the board. So you can't fault him for this interception. Roll plays it. Well, and uh, picks it off. So Halftime score, Miami 10 at Boston College 6. Now here's Reese Davis with the Saturn Halftime Report. Well, Ron Boston College showing absolutely no fear, but the Hurricanes with all of those weapons will four-play 80-yard drive in the day he breaks one off. All of a sudden, you're down at the half. Glad to have you with us on the Saturn Halftime Report. Brian caught up with head coach Tom O'Brien, talked with him about the first 30 minutes. Tom O'Brien, you're within striking distance of knocking off top-ranked Miami. What did your team do well in the first half? What do you have to do in the second half here tonight? Well, we held on to football. I think we had 18 minutes of possession time, which we'll have to do again. We're going to have to make some plays in a passing game, though. You know, we just can't run the football every play. So in order to win, we're going to have to stop them. They're explosive. You know, they got one big, they got a big pass and a big run on us right there at the end of the half. We got to go back, contain them, and then make some plays in a passing game. Best luck in the second Thanks. half. A little bit better than last time. 52-6 in the year 2000. Around the last time BC played at Miami. 
Okay, well, they've had a good game plan. As uh, as Mike Gottfried commented right at the end of the first half, that's when it got away from Boston College. What, just more of the same in the second half, Mike? Yeah, I'd say uh, I agree with what Tom O'Brien says. I think a receiver is going to have to make a big play for Boston College to score a touchdown, or they're going to have to get a short field. I don't think they can take the ball 60, 70, 80 yards against this Miami defense score a touchdown. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. 10 to 6 Miami on top BC made it difficult on him you look at Brian St. Pierre and BC will get the ball to here in the second half as Seavers one of the co-captains for tonight's ball game prepares to kick it off for the Hurricanes Williams and Black with the two deep men This one's going to bound out of the back of the end zone, and Blackman very wisely will let it go. Mike, let's look at the first 30 minutes and the stats, and what do you see here? What jumps out? I think a couple of things. Miami only having 79 yards passing. That's number one in what Tom O'Brien was talking about here. You keep Ken Dorsey off the field. Uh, 18 minutes, 20 seconds. You don't turn the ball over. They had one interception uh, that I don't uh, fault uh, St. Pierre for trying to get the ball in there in the last 20 seconds of the first half. Dorsey on the sideline. That mood never seems to change. He doesn't get rattled. If he does, it's inside. He, he doesn't express it outwardly. Two tight ends to open the second half, and they try the running play, and I mean Derek Knight just gets destroyed at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a half yard, and that's it. First half possessions. Boston well, College. Decent field position, but that again, they make you work the field. You know, when you get the ball in the 20-yard line, the 14 to 27, this is a great defensive football team. I mean, can't do it uh, without making mistakes. St. Pierre with a second down and 10. Miami, linebackers stay at home. Pressure, they don't need any more pressure because Cornelius Green comes up with the second sack of the night. And this is what makes Miami so tough, Mike, and elongate on this because they don't send the linebackers. They do it with the front four. Watch Cornelius Green just bury uh, the, defense, the offensive tackle. Brento, who has had a fairly good first half, but you can see the pressure. You're right, Ron. When you can do this with front four, you don't have to send linebackers. You can play a lot of coverage in the secondary. Third down and very long. They need to take it all the way out to the 30-yard line. Crowd trying to help them out. They roll the pocket this time, and the pass sink. Almost intercepted by Roll, and I mean he threw it right to it. Yeah, that's not a good series to come out in the half. And uh, you, if you're a Miami fan, that's a great series. But Boston College, almost disaster here in the first half or in the second uh, half here early. Roll had a chance for the interception. Only now you're going to give great field position <laughs> to Miami. Yep, Ethnic Sands is the deep man. McMiner, only the third time he's had to punt tonight. Is coming after, particularly off the corner, and they almost got it. Kick is not going to turn over, but Sands from the 48 of Miami retreats, now goes forward, and all of that for about two yards. I don't know how they didn't block that. Ken Dorsey with the first half, 8 to 18, but he has had some drop footballs. Here's a drop right here in the flat. Another drop, and then Boston College punishes this receiver, and then another drop. Mike, it was interesting in talking with uh, with Ken Dorsey yesterday that uh, you know we said, what about selection as far as where you're going to go? He is his family. He grew up about five minutes from the stadium at Berkeley. He thought he was going to Cal. All of a sudden, they kind of cooled off on him. Back to throw, and this one almost intercepted at the 45-yard line. So he said, when that happened, then he said, well, I'm going to go to Tennessee. So he committed to Tennessee. He hears on the radio, not from the Tennessee coaching staff, but he hears on the radio that Chris Sims had committed to Tennessee, and he said, what the heck, where am I going? So number four or five on his list was Miami. He called down here and said, I want to come down here and play quarterback, and uh, the rest is history, and he's done a marvelous job. I said, did your parents... Were they concerned about you going all the way across country? He said, my mom had already turned my room into an office, so I knew how concerned she was. I'm sure he was exaggerating. 
going to go with the draw play. McGahee gets the first tackle of the miss and now reverses it. Has five, has ten, 15 and 20, and he's off. Knocked out of bounds close to the 20 yard line. And there is a case where sheer athletic ability got the game. Spaziani's defense had done a nice job of turning the play in. He just reverses it. Yeah, Josh Odd, a linebacker, Ralph Perrin, a defensive back. They really do a good job of stuffing this. Now, there's a missed tackle right here. When you get tired, you miss some tackles. And all of a sudden, Willis McGee, he is in the secondary and shows you his strength running the football. Give credit to Kevin Beard with an outstanding block downfield, the junior out of Plantation, Florida. And now McGahee with 125 yards in the night. Gathers comes into the ball game, and Gathers is going to take it for a short game. Out of bounds, hit and uh, knocked out by Trevor White. Ron, we talked to Ken Dorsey about where he stacks up as uh, the great quarterbacks here in Miami. I was with Jim Kelly last Sunday, one of the great ones here. But when the thing that's most important that you grade a quarterback on is 29 and 1. He was 13 and 0 in the high school as a senior. Now Chuck Ely, 35 and 0 for the Toledo Rockets under Chuck Lauterbur, and uh, took that Toledo team to a lot of bowl games. But uh, uh, that's the way you grade a quarterback. And Ken Dorsey has only lost one game since his high school senior year. This, this is Gethers who takes it down to the nine-yard line. Reese Davis. Ron, Alabama and Southern Mississippi tied up 14-0, trying to convert a third down play. Redshirt freshman Brody Croyle has plenty of time, going to try to buy a little more. Finds receiver. Don't! Let's go with the ball and Michael Bowling, a pick six of the oddest variety. Southern Mississippi back in it, 14-7, Alabama. Good heavens. <laughs> Willis McGahey checks back into the lineup, replacing Gethers at tailback. And it's a two tight end alignment with third down at about a yard and a half. And it's McGahey straight up the middle, lowers that shoulder, and he'll have the first down. Bowman, Tim Bowman, a sophomore out of Milton, Massachusetts, is down at the bottom of that stack. What a night for this young guy right here with that long run a moment ago. 125 yards already. And as we told you, coming into tonight, his average almost eight yards per try. Played a little fullback last year, so he, he understands the fullback role, too, and so he's very proud of his, both his fullbacks because he knows they block for him and are unselfish players. 10.6 average in tonight. Isn't that amazing? Came in here with a 7.8. So 127 already, and we are early on in the third quarter. Little draw play. And he's tripped up as he gets the football and is going to be tackled at the four. The man who tripped him up was Doug Bassett. Doug got penetration, got an arm up, and tripped him up. Ron Willis McGee, he only played five games his high school senior year. He had a knee injury, so uh, even though people still recruited him because they knew he was going to be a great back. Well, he scored in the first half right before halftime that gave him a total of six touchdowns on the season right now it is a second down and goal for Miami they give it to him again blockers in front touchdown number seven on the year for Willis McGahee and credit Andrean Hill with an outstanding block to pave the way for it. to make the extra point attempt trying to make it a 17 to 6 ball game. Knocks it home and we'll take a break. 11 07 left in the third quarter but show you the touchdown. Look at Hill with the block coming right into your living room. Bam number 23 kicks his man out. So as we go to commercial. McGahee with his second touchdown of the night, seventh on the season. Well, a beautiful Saturday night here in Miami, Florida. Very muggy, very humid, but it's just the way the Hurricanes like it. And even more to their liking right now, Mike, with a 17 to 6 bulge. Yeah, this game is about ready to get away from Boston College here. They need a drive. Receivers 
with the kick. He's got a little breeze at his back, and this one's going to go out of the back of the end zone. Well, it's Monday Night Countdown, delivered by UPS at 7.30 Eastern. Join Stuart Scott and the best in the business for all the news from week three. Then at 9 o'clock, it's ABC's Monday Night Football, Al Michaels and John Madden. The Rams and the Buccaneers, 9 o'clock Eastern time. I think Warren Sapp is watching this game, uh, one of the finest defensive linemen ever to play here. I'd be shocked if he was not. Sure he is. A lot of the former players really keep up with the teams and how they're how they're coming along. Well, they came out with a statement to open this third quarter. What an impressive drive. Knight takes it straight forward. And Dave Ryan, let's check on the sideline with you. Ron Larry Kirker told me at halftime as Hurricanes have to have much more pressure on BC quarterback Ryan Snape here. They really got to make adjustments on defeating the pass protection schemes of the Eagles. He had too much time to throw, according to the coach, in the first 30 minutes of the game. Larry Kirker also upset guys at bad penalties. Personal fouls hurt this team. Expect the Canes to be more disciplined in this second half tonight. I knew he would be upset, particularly about a couple of those. Defensive stats, Bill now with seven tackles. McIntosh with five, Sykes with five. The set leads the way for BC with five. They run it back into the short side of the field. Knight breaks one tackle and on a second effort, he's going to have the first down. Well, that's an impressive effort by the little guy. I like what Larry Coker told us when we were talking to him the other day. He said they opened up last year and beat Penn State. And he said, we're on our way. And he said, Edward Reed, the defensive back, said, Coach, it's only one game. And he said, well said. You know, he's, he said, there's, he said, I was really excited, but they're, they're used to it around here. Well, he is <laughs> a fellow from Oklahoma who is, uh, there's nothing pretentious about him. You know, he's a very good football coach. Amazing. Most people don't take over a job and stay undefeated through a season and a half. St. Pierre, pass to the far side, has it complete just across midfield, and it's Miserelli. Frank Miserelli, a senior out of Stanhope, New Jersey. Great job by Brian St. Pierre of hiding the football. See him go back with a great fake. He gives the open hand. It freezes a defensive lineman, freezes a secondary, and he gets the pass off for a big gain. Miserelli's wide open. That's the best looking pass play they've had. Good for 21 yards, and they are across midfield. Horace Dodd tripped up by Matt Walters. No, it was Derek Knight. I beg your pardon, 20 rather than 28. Ron, Brian St. Pierre has thrown for at least one touchdown in 14 consecutive games. Now he's going to have to work to get keep that streak alive tonight. Six out of 10, 72 yards. Two tight ends in the ball game for BC. Ryan and Cushetta, number 86, a sophomore. He's out of Westport, Connecticut. 17 to 6, Miami on top. About the midway point of the third period, and here's Knight. Well, you see that secondary come up so quickly to make the hit. Reese Davis, let's check with you again. Ron, this is D.L. Roberson we saw against Oklahoma last year, leading Kansas State against USC. 19-6, Wild can't lead it. Fires a dart in there to James Perry. Then Roberson ran in the two-point conversion himself. K-State blowing out the Trojans 27-6 in the fourth quarter. Cal loses for the first time this season. Big day for Chance Harris. The Air Force by a two. I am shocked that the Cal lost. That was at home. And I thought the Air Force lost their first two tailbacks, wouldn't it? Yeah. Air Force, when you play that formation to wishbone in one week, it's tough. Hemmings in motion. Pass right of the middle, too tall, very dangerous right there. And he threw into double coverage as Hennings, the man who was in motion, was his intended receiver. So they'll have to give it back to Miami. Although they picked up some yardage and used some clock, now is when Miami, all of a sudden, it's like little blood in the water, and yeah. they uh, are like sharks. But that's what they do to you. You can't go the length of the field against them. They're, they're too tough on defense. You need, you need your defense to give you the ball on this your side of the 50. McMiner, very high kick. Another very good coverage kick. And Sands has to run away with uh, from it. 
NBC unable to touch it in the field of play, so they'll scrimmage from the 20. 44 yards and a kick, and we'll take a break. Miami continues to lead by 11. ESPN's College Football Saturday Night, presented by the United States Postal Service. Brought to you by Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Cold. Down. Easy. And by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. So welcome back to Miami. Seven minutes and 55 seconds remains in the third quarter. 17 to 6. The Canes coming alive in their opening drive of the second half. Ken Dorsey, Mr. Calm, cool and collected. Brings him out to the line of scrimmage, which is the 20. Well, short yardage this time for McGahee. But I'll tell you, tonight, they haven't been that short. In fact, let's take a look at some of his actions. Now, a long run in the first half, and you see him use his stiff arm to get away from some defenders. Right there from the two. This led to a touchdown. Big play in the first half. And this, this is his second half touchdown. It's good blocking. A powerful, fast runner. He just seems to glide, doesn't he? Gathers has checked into the lineup replacing the Gaby. And they give it to Gathers. It goes right at the middle. Gonna have five and six, maybe seven yards. And here's where the depth of Miami really just gives you a headache. Gathers was a running back in high school, but they wanted him. Uh, it was a track guy, but they wanted to move him to wide receiver because he had such great speed. Well, all of a sudden, they run into problems as far as depth at tailback. So they're moving back to tailback, and he has just been sensational. But he's a big back at 6'3", 210 pounds. He's out of Delray Beach, Florida. A lot of versatility, Mike. Third down. Pass is caught by Kellen Winslow. Breaks off the tackle with a good second effort and will have the first down. That's open right there, Ron. A Y option. Uh, tight end being called the Y in the offense. Just goes down, hooks, breaks away from the linebacker and makes the catch and moves the chains. I'm impressed with Kellen Winslow. They lost a great tight end in Shockey. But Kellen Winslow gives you a great hands receiver. And then Eric Winston gives you a good block. Roscoe Parrish it back in the ball game. Number one, tiny wide receiver, top of your screen. And Dorsey swings this one out and has it complete. That's Hill on Green Hill, and he's going to be stopped at around the 38-yard line. Larry Lester holding on for dear life. And now it's almost as if BC's got a player who's slow getting up, but just now it's like body punching on the part of Miami. They just keep slugging away. Well, you see all their hands are on their hips. They're tired. They're a tired defense right now. Hands are on their gasping for air, and they're, uh, Miami's coming after them with a patient game plan right now. Lester limped off the field. McGahee back in the lineup, and he's going to fight his way forward to what I believe is the first down at the 42 and a half, 43 yard line. And Dave Ryan down on the sideline. Uh, what do you got for us? Well, Ron and Mike, you were talking a moment ago about the heat really starting to affect BC. I did ask Tom O'Brien at halftime about that. He said, at the break, we had some guys cramping up a bit in the locker room. We hoped that wouldn't be a problem, but it is starting to take effect now, despite the fact the BigFog.com fans are blowing out as much mist as possible. You do see hands on hips, as Mike mentioned a moment ago, and guys are double over a bit. So it is hot down here, and the wind, guys, has stopped a bit, so it's kind of stifling. The heat really picking up. You know, and this is something, like I say, you just can't prepare for the kind of humidity that you can have in uh, in this part of the world. It's just a thing, some time of constancy <laughs> that is there. You can't get away from it. Now, Frank Spaziani trying to do anything he can do right now to stop this drive from Miami. Mike, it is a first down. And whatever was ailing at McGahee, obviously he's okay and he's back on the field. And Gethers comes back to the sideline. It's not only the heat. You get those big 300 pound offensive linemen leaning on you for a half. Yep. Play action. Here comes the pressure. Dorsey steps up. Going to be hit from behind and he will be sacked by Boston College. First time that they have gotten to him tonight. So it's going to be a second down and about 13 yards. Good pressure. Tom Martin's in there. Uh, 
They get good pressure. They force Ken Dorsey up inside and then good to sack. Rob Chudzinski is the offensive coordinator of this Miami football team, a very young man. When we asked Larry Coker about that, he said, you know, I spent six years in an offensive office with him, and I knew he was capable of running and leading this offense. And they seem to have not missed a beat. Blitz is on in the pass, incomplete. In fact, I want to do a favor for uh, for Chud. Uh, he's got a good friend who's a former BC tight end. His name is John Reagan. And he underwent a bone marrow transplant this past week. And John, uh, Chud said he just wanted to send along his best and hope that you are feeling better. John, as I said, a former tight end who played at Boston College, but a very good friend of, uh, of Rob's. Situation, third down at about 13. Clock shows 428 left in the third. Gathers comes back into tailback. Dorsey will go from the shotgun. And now here's another audible. Blitz is coming. Did he call two audibles there, Mike? No, I think what the, the movement, he checked off first, and then all of a sudden Boston College moved again, and he tried to check off yeah. again, but he got a delay penalty. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Those defensive linemen starting to move, and one of those offensive linemen moved. You see big uh, Carlos Joseph, the backside of him, number 76, 6'6", 316, and his brother, William, is 6'5", 282. Can you imagine feeding those two guys alone? They'll get all the money back that they've provided food with them. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's a great point. Third down and 18. They need to take it to the BC 47-yard line. Blitz right up the middle just as the ball is thrown. Dorsey got rocked. And that was Churchu coming from the middle linebacking spot. And Vinny Churchu is a very good linebacker. He leads this team in tackles. We talked about he hadn't played linebacker until he uh, sophomore year in high school when he came to BC. Makes a good hit on Ken Dorsey. And Frank Spaziani did exactly what he needed to do. Stop that drive. Freddie Capshaw waiting for the snap back at the 20-yard line. And Jamal Burke is the deep man. Very, very close to blocking this one. Here's Burke from the 20. Runs into the boundary and he'll go out of bounds. All he could get was 10 yards and we'll take a break. 414 left. Miami 17 to 6. Well, welcome back. And now let's take a look at the Quaker State storyline. Willis McGahee, 16 rushes, 140 yards, two touchdowns. Dorsey, 10 of 23, 91 yards, and Brian St. Pierre, Boston College, 6 of 11, 72 yards, and one pickoff. Brandon Brokaw, the largest of the tailbacks for BC, comes into the ball game. fake it to him then they throw it to him and he makes the reception and he's going to make his way to the 35 that's a gain of four Velma is there defensively and Velma's going to be in double figures in tackles very quickly he's got eight on the night right now A big play out of a wide receiver. Miami brings the linebackers, and the running play is going to go for about four yards to the 39. Reese Davis, uh, what do you got? Well, I tell you, Ron, nothing much has gone wrong for Florida State on this night. They're ahead of Duke 45 to 10. It's 45 3 at this point. Duke on offense, completed pass there to Kalen Powell. And look who needs to get out of the way. Oh, Coach Bowden. Coach Bowden can still square up, take a hit. He got back up, the hat back on. The Oakley's adjusted. Seems to be fine. 45-10 in the fourth quarter. Huh. Knocked off that hat. 
That's hard to do. Sunglasses may have been bruised too. Third down, a couple of yards is what they need. The pass is caught. They got the first down, Grant Adams. The sophomore out of Glen Rock, New Jersey. Pushed out of bounds by Roll. This is a great job by Brian St. Pierre. Going to his left and uh, throwing the ball off balance to Grant Adams. A real nice throw here. Moving the pocket, trying to take a little, little pressure away. Just a nice throw to Grant Adams. Brokaw continues to operate at tailback. 11 point Miami lead and for the second series in a row. BC moving the football. Brokaw right up the middle. He's a load at 241 pounds. That's going to be a gain of almost seven yards on first down. You're right, though. They move the football, but they can't score. Yeah. And they and they take a lot of time and they don't get any big plays. And that's the problem with this offense uh, tonight against Miami. But credit Miami. That's the reason you don't get big plays. Actually, as much as anything, Mike, uh, they're doing Miami a favor. If, if they do drive down here and kick a field goal, just time is rushing off the clock. They're about to hit the two minute mark in the third quarter. Now, BC still in this game, but they need big plays. Brokaw again fights his way this time inside the 45 yard line. It's going to be a third down and a couple. William Joseph there to make the stop. The big senior out of Miami Edison. Mike you agree with that uh, that a lot of people say that William of all the players in the state at Florida Florida State and here at Miami they think he'll be the first one drafted uh, from the three teams. I, I do. I, I like McDougal and Joseph and uh, Randy Shannon was telling me about William Joseph. See, he said he's a quiet guy and if the TV guy comes in and puts a camera a microphone in front of him he goes and grabs another defensive lineman and says hey you talk to him I don't want to talk to him <laughs> he's just really shy. So let's see if the Eagles are going to bog down again or if they can continue this drive. They need to take it to the 42 and a half yard line. Broke off. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Even the second effort's not going to make it. It's going to be fourth down. Now, Mike Godfrey, do you go for this? No, they have to go for it. They've got to go for it. They have no choice here. Matt Walters and William Joseph combining on the stop for Miami. Well, William Joseph did a great job on that play. He really got low. He was double teamed. You're going to see him right here. Watch him duck underneath and make the play on that with his arm, right arm. Fourth down. And the crowd getting to their feet, asking everybody else to get to their feet, those that are not standing. He's going to have it. Slid to the outside in sheer power. It took Jonathan Vilma with him as Vilma makes his ninth tackle of the night. It's a good drive, but they got to cash in. <laughs> it's like taking your check to the bank and they won't cash it. They're driving up to the teller right now, but uh, it's a tough teller. They're still a long way from the teller here, yeah. Coach, don't you think? Well, they're checking the... Uh, just put it, this, the bank the is in machine. sight, but they can't see the teller yet. They may have to rob the bank to score. <laughs> 27 minutes, time of possession, six points. Three that seconds. tells the whole story. Excuse me. Two seconds down to one, and that is the end of the third quarter. So we'll take a timeout with Miami continuing to lead 17 to 6. Seventeen to six, our score. Providing these pictures, the Goodyear Blimp stars and stripes. Now each year, the Goodyear Blimp visits over 100 communities and participates in dozens of telecasts at major sporting events. And providing some great aerials tonight here over Miami. Isidore went west and didn't come in this direction. Folks in the Keys and the folks down here in South Florida, extremely appreciative of that. See how much noise these hurricanes can make in the final 15 minutes. First and 10 BC. 
St. Pierre drills this ball, has it complete. He was tied in at the 34. And Sean Ryan did a good job of gathering that and making sure that he had the reception. In the two games, they've outscored their opponents 24 to nothing. So they've been a good fourth quarter team in two ball games. Connecticut and Stanford, the opponents. Mike, this is hard to believe, but Feldman, number 51, who leads the team in tackles, already has 11 tackles in this ball game. Four solo and one tackle for a loss. And Sykes has got nine in the secondary. Straight ahead, they're going to have the first down again. They continue to move the chains. That's Brandon Brokaw, tackled by McDougal. In close to that bank. <laughs> but I think Bad Benny is the teller. <laughs> Well, they're, they're getting close enough to start filling out that deposit sheet anyway. So the change move, 10th play of the drive. There's Dana Bible. He's proud of his University of Cincinnati football team today. He was a defensive back under Tony Mason at Cincinnati. And, uh, down crowd was trying to get a little excited to pump up the defense St. Pierre far sideline and it's overthrown wanted to Ryan the tight end again but he waited too long to get that one away Jonathan Vilma was the one who was covering on the play and he also had some help over there on the sideline this is the part of the football game when you're fresh defensive lineman uh, when you substitute like Miami does that you have fresh people to rush the quarterback. They play six, seven, eight defensive linemen. Second and ten. Derek Knight is the tailback on this play. They try to get the ball to him, but he gets held up, and the ball is thrown in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Mizarelli. Bree Sykes just knocked the ball out of the hands of Mizzarelli. Same option route. He just punched it out with his right hand. Maury Sykes is a really active player. We mentioned back in the first half, but in case you missed it, he had two interceptions against the University of Florida. One he took all the way back. Florida's about to score. Intercepted it inside the five-yard line and went the distance. But play of the drive coming up third down and ten. They need the 20. And the 73,622 on their feet here at the Orange Bowl. From the shotgun. Puts it up, got single coverage, and he overthrows it. Jamal Burke, and that's not surprising, he's their go-to guy. And they got defensively what they wanted, Mike. Yeah, they really did get the bump and run, so it becomes a fade to Jamal Burke that Kelly Jennings running stride for stride. So they're going to have to take a loan out of the bank. Field goal. You see the two that Scortino has made tonight. 35 and 41. This is a 48-yard attempt. Wide left, no good. So we'll take a timeout. Tom O'Brien thinking, wow, all of that for nothing. We'll be right back. Thursday night on ESPN at 7.30, Chris Ricks in Florida State takes on Dave Ragone and the Louisville Cardinals. College Football Thursday presented by Circuit City on ESPN. Louisville better get ready for that big back, Greg Jones. Talk about McGahee being a big back. Those When those two play, Florida State and Miami, two big backs. Thunder and thunder, you're right. Kyle Colbier in the ball game at fullback in front of McGahee. They give it to McGahee, and uh, defensively, Boston College is just right there to stymie this play and knock him down for the loss. Ray Henderson led the way. And actually, McGahee did the smart thing instead of trying to give a second effort and getting the ball taken away. He just stopped and went down. Right defensive call. Miami ran right into uh, an overloaded defense. Loss of about five and a half yards. Frank Spaziani looks like he needs it in front of that fog machine. Yeah. I'm surprised he doesn't have his Yankee hat on him. <laughs> Big Yankee baseball fan. 
Boston College showing blitz, and here they come, and a quick pass. Ooh, that ball tipped and almost intercepted, but a flag had come down, and I think it is a delay, Mike. Ledbetter tipped it. Either delay or movement at the line. Dead ball. False start. Yeah. On the offense. Five yard penalty. Beat second down. And let's check with Reese Davis. All right, Ron, USC and Kansas State 27 6. Trojans trying to get back in this thing. Carson Palmer to carry Colbert for the touchdown. That one stood, and the Trojans have just scored another one. Seconds ago, it is now 27 19 with the extra point pending. Bill Snyder not very happy right now, I would uh, assume. Blitz coming off the corner, and they call the screen back to this side, and he's loose into the secondary and hang on. Reverses his field. McGahey still going. Is he going to get caught from behind? He gets caught at the one-yard line. That's what they're going to say down at the three by Larry Lester. Chris Myers with a great block on the screen, number 77. Boy, was it the right call, Mike. They were going away from where the pressure came. It's good for 77. Watch Myers, number 77, right here, leads the block. He just gets in the way of the corner, and then uh, all of a sudden, McGee, he is loose. I know he had a loss of that play a moment ago, but this is going to put him close to 200 yards on the night. Larry Lester with a good job chasing him down. He really did. Gathers comes in a tailback, and they give it to him. Sweep to the right side, cuts it up. He's at the one-yard line, but he doesn't get in. No, you talked about Eric Winston, uh, freshman, a tight end, 6'7", 275, number 87. They like him so well, they, they go, they run to him, his side. Well, as I mentioned, he was accustomed to lining up and blocking at Midland Lee because the year they won the, the state championship with uh, Cedric Benson, they went two tights a lot with him. Let's see if they go to the right here. Yep, they go right behind his block and straight ahead. Gathers is not going to get it in the end zone. Bowman is the man down underneath that stack, who's submarine, and also Jerome Ledbetter. A 77 yard pass play. And you can see those big guys are winded. They've been playing it tough all night anyway, but a long run on a play like that, it really... Yeah, they're gasping right now. It scorches your lungs. It really does. Third down. And it's Kevin Winslow. They split out to the top of your screen. They're going to throw a fade rock to him, and he catches it for the touchdown. Six foot five against five eight. Pretty good scouting right yep. there. Very good scouting. Ken Dorsey, what, what's so funny, a mild-mannered guy and soft-spoken, but he is such a competitor. And you can see it come out in him like when he came off the field just now. Seaver's extra point hits the right upright, but it goes through. So, let's take one look at the touchdown before we go away to break. Winslow at 6-5, but this is no contest. Trevor White, as Mike said, is only 5-8. And somewhere his dad is very, very happy uh, tonight. We'll take a break. 24-6, our new score. Hurricanes by 18. ESPN's College Football Saturday Night. Presented by the United States Postal Service. And in part by Mitsubishi Lancer where style and substance meet. Are you in? Welcome back to the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Miami Hurricane has won 25 games in a row. They haven't lost here in the Orange Bowl since 1999. And they're trying to make a statement that it's not going to happen this evening. Still a lot of football to be played, just under 11 minutes on the clock. But all of a sudden, Miami has stretched it out to an 18-point ball game. 
receivers. This time kicking into a little bit of a breeze. Got under it. It's going to be short kick. Gonna get on the football. Knocked down at the five yard line is Blackman. Boy, that's a ball you got to catch. They are very fortunate they didn't turn it right back over. Well, Sunday night football at ESPN 8:30. Michael Vick takes center stage. It's Atlanta playing host to the Cincinnati Bengals. Coverage begins with NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite at 7:30 Eastern. Atlanta 0-2. They lost a game they should have won last week. From the six. Draw play, nothing doing. Derek Knight, as soon as he got the football, got William Joseph, and then Jonathan Velma was right there as well. I know the Jets are here tonight, uh, and I know they're going to be looking at 94 because he's going to be a high draft pick. And there's a lot of, a lot of draft picks on this field. They had a lot of draft picks last year. There's another Jet. Vinny. Jets all over the place. Yeah. Second down. St. Pierre to throw, swings it out. This is Knight. Tries to turn it upfield. Good. Heavens, what an open field hit. Ball came loose and has been picked up by Jonathan Belma. Touchdown, Miami. It was DJ Williams who hit him and knocked him loose of the football. Special teams mistake cost him a touch. Now DJ Williams with a nice tackle here. He puts his head up. Ball comes loose. Derek Knight just coughed it up. Delma with the recovery. Extra point attempt is up and is good. So we'll take a timeout. 31 to 6, our new score with 9.55 remaining. Downtown Miami on a Saturday evening much clearer than everybody thought it would be Isidore has been turning in the Gulf but finally decided to take a westerly turn and is a long way from Miami and there has been hurricane action here in the Orange Bowl though with 955 remaining and the explosion has really come here in the second half from uh, from Miami as they serve notice on the opening drive Mike of uh, the second half scored the touchdown and now they come up with a defensive touchdown and they wore down uh, Boston College uh, they have uh, they are flat right now good kick into the win two yards deep he's going to run it out wow he is attacked at the 11 yard line and knocked down And we'd like to take a time out to salute the men and women of the Southern European Task Force, CTAF, serving in Vicenza, Italy, and watching us on American Forces Network. And we all say to you uh, with all sincere thanks for all that you do. Amen. Bless them. God bless them. All the service people. position straight ahead with the handoff and it will uh, go for a five yard gain you know Mike the amazing thing I know all kids want to compete you want to get an opportunity to handle the ball but against this ball club why after what had just happened why would you take one three yards deep in the end zone and try to return again you put your offense with their back up against the wall you know what he's thinking though he's thinking the offense is bogged down I'm going to make something happen <laughs> give me the football I'm going to make it happen boy against the cover teams of this uh, Miami group that's really hard to do Brokaw the ball carrier fighting his way toward the first down mark he's out to the 19 Reese Davis will go back to you Ron, the Trojans, I told you they scored earlier. This is how they did it in a 27-13 game. Sultan McCullough 
Knifing through that hole and taking it to the house. It's now a 27-20 game, and the Trojans have the ball. Just over two minutes to go, and they are on the move. Washington on top of Wyoming by a touchdown. Cowboys have lost 11 in a row. Hey, Mikey is a good-looking running back. Yeah, a little tighter right there. Third now, down and short. Now Bill Snyder's really not happy. <laughs> They're going to throw on third down. Zings the pass, has it complete. Ball is loose, and it's recovered by Miami. And that is roll. Entrell roll. Pass was complete. Ball was separated from Ryan. And the Hurricanes come up with still another turnover. Yeah, Maurice Sykes in on that play. D.J. Williams. Again, the little option, tight, tight end option. Nice tackle by Maurice Sykes. Sykes is a big play maker. So the ball rests at the 33-yard line, 8-16 left to go in the ball game. Sykes being congratulated by his teammates on the sideline as the defense just got one touchdown and trying to get another one. So the offense is back out. Gathers the tailback. Play action to him, and they're going to go long, looking for the end zone, and it is a touchdown, Andre Johnson. with a big smile on his face. Todd Seavers with the extra point attempt coming right here. Freddie Capshaw, the holder. Knocks it home. Now let's take another look at it, Mike. Ken Dorsey's just going to throw a perfect strike to Andre Johnson. What great concentration because there was a hand in his face and the ball went right by it and he still catches it for the touch. 38 to 6, our new score. Now, the gentleman you're looking at right there uh, deserves a lot of credit for what has happened this year. Art Keel, he doesn't know anything but the University of Miami. He played here has coached here and now the offensive line coach. Mike, I think for him to have lost what he did last year and for this group to have come along the way they have, it's it's just absolutely amazing. A great story about that offensive line. You see number 66 there, Brett Romberg, in a game against Temple last week, Chris Myers gave up a sack and Brett Romberg yeah. told Chris Myers, don't let that happen again because they only gave up four sacks all last year. Yep, and I think it all starts right there with Art. He deserves a, a lot of credit. Well, that, that ball was caught short of the 20-yard line. Mark Jim. When you look at this league run, they're playing for third. Virginia Tech and Miami clearly better than most the other Big East teams. You're playing for third in this league. Jets kickoff was uh, short but it it uh, was caught and possession was maintained and they go from the 16 yard line St. Pierre sets a screenplay Derek Knight going to take it across the 20 to around the 24 and big big games today of course Florida beats Tennessee uh, Rex Grossman with a great game Virginia Tech and m that was a game uh, I didn't think either team could run on either team. Notre Dame again, very fortunate, uh, won that football game. Charlie Rogers uh, had a big game, and Ohio State uh, slips by UC. Yeah, that win by Virginia Tech at College That's Station big. is uh, is just huge. Well, here we go with the little guy again. Derek Knight is going to take it across the 30-yard line. 
Harris making the tackles. Take a look at the uh, the stats in this one. Yeah, I, again, Rex Grossman, 20, 34, 324. Virginia Tech got uh, 125 yards rushing, but look what AM got. Only 38. Charlie Rogers, best receiver in the country, and uh, Ross, Lydell Ross, playing in uh, place of Claret, uh, gets 23 carries, 130 yards. They needed him in that ball game. a holding call on the play as St. Pierre runs for his life and is out of bounds at the 40. And uh, speaking of running for his life, uh, let's go back to Reese. <laughs> I'm sitting right here in the pocket, Ron. I'm okay. So do I, Carson Palmer, on the 4th and 15, trying to save the Trojans against Kansas State. And it's not even close. And the Wildcats bring a ranked non-conference opponent to Manhattan, and they emerge victorious 27-20. Well, that's a heck of an effort by the Trojans to uh, almost come back. But as we mentioned, there are a lot of tough places to play in the country. Manhattan is definitely one of those. Right? No check it. Forrest died in a tailback, and he takes it across midfield and down to the 47. And Dave Ryan, let's check back on the sideline here at the Orange Bowl. Ron Willis McGahee's night is over. He's got a sprained left ankle. Trainers tell me he's got an ice compression unit on that ankle, but should be okay. The team has not played Connecticut in for two weeks, so he's got plenty of time to heal. One other note about Willis, he's a published author already. Last year, he wrote a four-page essay on the first game ever played in Miami football history, a 7-0 win over Rollins back in 1926. It was submitted by the English Department for a College of Arts and Sciences recruiting brochure and published so Willis McGee can run and he can write. Yes, Submarine on the play is Andre Williams. Well, this was six to three, and this was one of the key plays in this football game. Early in the game, Willis McGee, he makes a couple people miss. Gets a good block downfield from a wide receiver, and that was a play that kind of ignited this football team. What's up, MJ? What's up, team? Okay, he uh, feeling good on the sidelines, and. You know, I, I guess they should because this was another game they had to point to. They knew that B.C. was going to come in here and hit them in the mouth if they allowed them to. And B.C. led this game 6-3, to three, folks. And since then, it has been 35 unanswered points by Miami. And talking to the SID department at Boston College, they said it's kind of funny. Uh, Miami wants revenge. They won the game last year. <laughs> <laughs> but they still want revenge for the close game. Tom O'Brien's team really came in here with a good plan. Dana Bible, Frank Spaziani, good game plan. They just ran out of uh, bodies, and uh, Miami took it to them in the second half. You know, Mike, and you mentioned during one of the timeouts that since BC was going to have to start throwing, that hang on and watch there yeah. could be a defensive Interception. touchdown or two or something. And that, that's exactly what happened. As Belma picked up a fumble and took it into the end zone. St. Pierre throws to his tight end, and Ryan holds on this time. He took a pretty good shot from uh, the secondary at uh, around the 33-yard line. The only thing in doubt right now is Brian St. Pierre has thrown for at least one touchdown in 14 consecutive games, whether that's going to continue or not. It was Glenn Sharp who was over there to make the tackle. He's getting an opportunity, a freshman out of right here in Miami at Carroll City. Well, there's a lot of high school players down here. St. Pierre looks back to his right, has the pass complete, and out of bounds is Jamal Burke. And again, Glenn Sharp making the tackle. 21 yards in the pass play. Jamal Burke uses his big body again. A lot of pushing and shoving going on there. Glenn Sharp, uh, the freshman defensive back, 5'11", trying to stay with him. And I can tell you right now, Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator, and his defensive players don't want to allow a touchdown in this ball game. They want to hold it to all field goals if there is any score. Horace Dodd dancing his way at right guard. And let's uh, go back to Reese Davison, an update on Virginia Tech. All right, Ron, you and Mike were talking about everybody else playing for third in the Big East, Virginia Tech against Texas A&M, and 
Ron's absolutely right. This is a big time win. Brian Randall had a terrific game. 10 out of 11 passing, hitting Ernest Wilford here for the long gain to set up Lee Suggs' touchdown. And Virginia Tech took care of AM 13 3. And right behind Miami in the poll, Texas. They're up on Houston 31 11. Sims a solid die to get. All righty. Thanks, Reese. Pumped it once. Got to be hit and he's sacked. That's a 21 yard line. There is a flag down on the near side of the field. St. Pierre took one heck of a shot from McDougal. Might be holding on Miami in the secondary. Nope. It's on DC. Only the second penalty on BC. They've taken care of business there. Tried to get him on a post corner route and uh, thought the defensive back from Miami, Intra Roll, may have got caught for holding the receiver. But uh, illegal procedure before that. Illegal formation on the offense. The penalties declined. Third down. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. That's what the penalty is for. You know, Mike, it's interesting. We went to practice on on Thursday, and the one question that we had, we knew that BC would come in here with a good plan, that also they would come in here with a good effort. They had a week off to prepare. But we wondered if they could run with Miami with a, on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. And that, to me, has been a big part of the story. Time. I agree. I thought it would be tough for him to score a touchdown. St. Pierre pumps it, goes over the middle, and it is almost intercepted. If you're going to play Miami, you better get a short field. Your defense needs to turn that ball over, and you need to get it to 50 if you're going to score on them. If you want to go 80, 75, 70, 65, you're not going to do it. Sean Taylor was the man who almost came up with the interception there. And now it's going to be fourth down at 18. And obviously, BC will go for it, trailing 38 to 6. St. Pierre, pressure off the corners, got hit as he threw, and it is knocked away on a nice defensive play. That is 26 Sean Taylor who just went parallel to the ground and knocked it away. McDougal with good pressure up front. All fades. Sitting back here in a two deep look. Ryan St. Pierre is going to get hit by McDougal. Been that kind of night for the quarterback from BC. 12 plays, 63 yards, 4 minutes and 59 seconds, and we've said this already a couple of times tonight, and they come away with no points. That's difficult. Crudup comes in at quarterback. Derek, a sophomore on Deerfield Beach, Florida. Where's number 18? He gives a handoff to Jarrett Payton, and Jarrett's going to take that ball for a game. Well, here's a reminder coming up next on ESPN Sports Center with Dan Patrick and Kevin Frazier. Irish fantastic finish the Bearcats uh, play it tough with the Buckeyes and the Yankees clincher that and more sports center coming up next here on ESPN so Dorsey on the sideline and uh, to see his numbers for well, the second half really came alive he closed strong Ron he took the passes he needed to take in the second half he got a lot of help from uh, Willis McGahee. Johnson made a great catch. The offensive line protected him. Defense gave him the football. Kellen Winslow did as well. Kellen right? Winslow did a great job on fade route. And he is right. Ken Dorsey's right up there in the Heisman uh, voting. Yep. About to go under two minutes left in this one. All over but the final stats. 38 to 6. Number one Miami. Here comes the blitz up the middle, and that pass is complete right over the middle to Hill. Andre Hill will take it close to the first down, but he's short. 
Well, let's take a look at uh, Dorsey today and uh, his results. In the first half, he just had some drop footballs and uh, credit BC with a little of that. The second half, he came out firing. This was a big pass play to Kellen Winslow for the touchdown. Hit Johnson on the uh, throw. Back to live action, straight ahead with the running play, and that's uh, Jarrett Payton. And of course, I am sure you know, but just in case you don't, obviously it's uh, Walter Payton's son. He's had a problem with injuries, and the interesting thing about him is, Mike, he was an outstanding soccer player in high school and really didn't start his football career until uh, late in his high school uh, high school uh, career, so to speak. Walking on the beach and stepped on something, cut his foot, so he's just had different injuries as have, has kept him out of the lineup. Well, consider this. Frank Gore might have been the starter had he stayed healthy, but he injured a knee in spring practice as you look at Peyton running the ball again. Gore is scheduled to come back in October. Now, you talk about a stable of running backs. When they get Gore back with McGahee, with Gethers, and with Peyton, Good heavens, you're not going to have enough footballs to go around. No, I don't want to give the Wally Pip story, but uh, <laughs> let me tell you something. There's nobody moving out Willis McGee. You forget that right there. Lou Gehrig right here. <laughs> Clock is at 30 seconds and counting. And the number one team in the nation is going to pick up the victory, and they're going to do it convincingly. Jared Payton carrying the ball on the sweep, possibly the final play of the night. And the crowd beginning to stand and applaud here at the Orange Bowl Stadium. So the final score, Miami 38 in Boston College 6. Coming up next is Sports Center. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. For Mike Godfrey, Dave Ryan, and our entire crew, I'm Ron Franklin. This is the presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. 73,622 paid their way in tonight to see number one Miami win conventionally. Good night from Miami, Florida.